Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And today for Saturday, I thought we'd take a look at St. Luke's Gospel that's assigned for morning prayer. Now, I remember that we talked yesterday about uh, the story from the book of uh, Daniel, I'm sorry, book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, and the ark has now been taken, and Hophni and Phinehas, Eli's wicked sons, have died in the battle. And it, it is interesting to note that when they give the word to Eli, um, that Phineas's wife has a miscarriage and the child dies. Uh, and uh, and she names the, the child Ichabod, which is the glory has departed. And I remember a very dear friend, uh, a bishop, a late bishop now, God rest his soul, Brother John, Charles Vockler, uh, pointing at something for, uh, that was wonderful and glorious and has now fallen into decay. And he just pointed to it and he, on the picture and he said, Ichabod, the glory has departed. And so I think oftentimes when things have just gone away because we've turned away from the way that God wants us to be, it's Ichabod, the glory has departed. Anyway, let's take a look at Luke's gospel lesson for today. Uh, chapter 12, beginning at verse 49. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled? I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth? I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. A father shall be divided against his son, and the son against the father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter-in-law against the mother, and the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said unto the people, When you see a cloud rising out of the west straightway, you say, Here cometh the shower, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you said, There will be a heat, and it cometh the pass. Ye hypocrites. Ye can discern the face of the sky and the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When ye goeth with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might. Okay, so we kind of have a hodgepodge of teachings from Jesus, and some of it sounds really familiar because we recently did the, the synoptic gospel equivalent in Matthew's gospel, uh, and that is about the idea of division. Jesus does not want to have division, right? He's not come in order to cause division, but he's acknowledging the reality, right? He says, um, he says, henceforth, I'm sorry, suppose you've come to bring peace on earth, uh, well, yes, in the big picture, that's how he greets, especially after the resurrection, peace be unto you. Um, but the reality is, is it's going to cause division because there'll be people who will not accept the word of God. There are people who don't want to be reformed. There are people who don't want to submit themselves to the will of God. And, and, and even the natural law itself, which attests to the glory of God and how it is that we're created to be and how to live. Uh, people will fight against it because of their fallen condition and their sinfulness. Heck, even the angels who were created good uh, in heaven, that some of them rebelled against God, right? Those are the demons, the fallen angels. Um, but he, he's just acknowledging the reality that it's going to cause division, and it's son against the father, and the mother against the daughter, and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law, etc., etc. These sort of things are going to happen as a reality of people trying to live good. But it doesn't mean we stop living good, right, for the sake of peace. Rather, we pray for those who, with whom we disagree. We pray for those who are bringing us uh, discord. Uh, and we pray, like we talked about earlier, right, about turning the other cheek and loving our enemies and praying for our persecutors. We continue to do exactly that in this case, uh, hoping to bring them to the truth of God in Jesus Christ by with love and charity, of course. But we have to be ready for this reality. And I do know a, a very dear friend uh, when I was in college. Um, she was uh, not born in the faith. She wasn't raised in the faith. And she became a full-fledged believer. And her parents wanted nothing to do with her. Because right? she had become, you know, one of those people. And it was really quite sad for her. And yet she wasn't going to give up on Jesus. And she said, I just pray for my parents every day. And I, But you know, now here we are 35 years later. And I'm wondering... I've got to go find out uh, where she is and what she's up to and hope that her prayer was fulfilled. So today is, uh, as we said, Saturday. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, look forward to worship tomorrow, right? We're going to gather together in God's name with no public worship at St. John's, but tomorrow, 7.30 morning prayer, 8 o'clock Holy Communion, 10 o'clock Holy Communion, uh, and then, of course, 5.30 evening prayer 
uh, with the opportunity to receive Holy Communion. So I hope that you will be with us, you'll join us for worship, uh, and to glorify God, and most importantly, to receive him in the Blessed Sacrament. And may your Saturday be full of blessings.